Heat exchangers are a key device in many facets of our everyday lives. Do you ever wonder why your car doesn't overheat despite all of the heat produced by the engine? That's because heat exchangers called radiators are built into cars to cool the inner fluids that are heated by the engine. The functionality of radiators and heat exchangers can be explained using principles of heat and momentum transfer. This presentation explores the transport principles behind radiators and heat exchangers and how they come together to make functioning devices used in everyday life. So what exactly is a heat exchanger? A heat exchanger is a system used to transfer heat between two or more fluids, being liquid or gas. The heat is transferred by conduction through the exchange of fluids that are separated by a conductive medium. These fluids in the heat exchanger have three different types of flow. Co-current flow, which are fluids flowing in the same direction, counter-current flow, fluids flowing in opposite directions, and cross-current flow, fluids flowing perpendicular to each other. They can also be used in combination with one another, as shown in the hybrid model. Depending on the type of heat exchanger needed, different flows are selected that optimizes the amount of heat transfer needed. Heat exchangers are very common in industry and common household appliances. A refrigerator and car engine are great examples of applications that utilize many different types of heat exchangers. One specific example of a heat exchanger in a car engine is the radiator which keeps the engine from overheating. In technical terms, it is a cross-flow heat exchanger. With the radiator specifically, the fluid flowing laterally through the tubes is the hot coolant, and the fluid flowing perpendicular to the coolant is cool air from the environment. As you can see, the hot coolant liquid enters the radiator through the upper hose and exits through the lower hose at a cooler temperature. This process allows for coolant to be sent back to the engine at a safe temperature. The radiator is used to control the temperature of the engine to keep your car running smoothly. This process runs as a cycle starting with the engine running and the coolant flowing around the engine. Ideally, we want the engine to stay at a constant temperature where it will run most efficiently. The engine starts off relatively cold, which initially means the coolant is used to help heat up the engine. The engine generates heat while it is running, which is transferred to the coolant that is cycling around the engine and thus heating up the engine. There's a thermometer in the engine compartment, which measures the temperature of the coolant. When the coolant reaches a high enough temperature, the thermometer has a mechanism which opens a connecting tube to the radiator. The coolant then flows out of the engine compartment and into the radiator. The coolant runs horizontally across the radiator in pipes. Cold air runs perpendicular to these pipes through the radiator to cool down the coolant through heat transfer. The cold air that is circulating through the radiator is brought in through the front of the car. If there is not enough air circulating, a fan between the radiator and the engine will be initiated to increase the airflow. The coolant runs from the top of the radiator to the bottom where it is continuously cooled down through heat transfer with the air. The coolant flow is turbulent which allows for the coolant to be cooled down in a uniform manner. The nature of the flow will be covered more in depth later on. When the coolant reaches the bottom of the radiator, it is cooled and returned back to the engine compartment. The cold coolant then flows around the engine, cooling the engine down to keep it at a relatively steady temperature. This ensures that the engine does not overheat and runs efficiently. This cycle continues with the thermometer regulating when the coolant flows to the radiator and when it does not to keep the engine temperature steady the whole time your car is running. In fluid dynamics, flow can be characterized by how the fluid is moving with laminar, turbulent, or transitional flow. Laminar flow, as shown on top, is smooth and orderly and classified with a Reynolds number less than 2300. Turbulent flow, on the bottom, is rough and chaotic with a Reynolds number above 4000. And transitional flow is a combination of laminar and turbulent flow with a Reynolds number in between 2300 and 4000. The tubes in the radiator will sometimes have a fin inserted into them called a turbulator, which increases the turbulence of the fluid, creating a turbulent flow. Other common turbulators that can be used as well are a ball, spring, or matrix turbulator. If the fluid in the radiator has a very smooth laminar flow through the tubes, only the fluid that is actually touching the tubes would be cooled directly. The amount of heat transferred to the tubes from the fluid running through them depends on the difference in temperature between the tube and the fluid touching it. So, if the fluid that is in contact with the tube cools down quickly, less heat will be transferred. By creating turbulence inside the tube with a turbulator, all of the fluids mix together, keeping the temperature of the fluid touching the tubes high so that more heat can be extracted and all the fluid inside the tube is used effectively.
We can model the heat transfer of a radiator as a progression of convection to conduction to convection again. Modeling with one-dimensional steady heat flow, we know first and foremost that for a radiator with area A, the heat flow Q prime is divided by Q prime equals Q times A, where Q is the heat flux. The heat flux is divided into three sections for a simplified radiator. The convective heat flux in the coolant phase, the conductive heat flux in the wall phase, and the convective heat flux in the air phase. For the convective heat it transfer through the coolant with heat transfer coefficient H coolant, we find that the convective heat flux Q equals H coolant times the difference between the temperature of the coolant and the temperature of the coolant at the wall interface. The conductive heat transfer through the wall with length L and thermal conductivity K wall is calculated by Q equals K wall times the difference between the temperature of the coolant at the wall interface minus the temperature of the air at the wall interface divided by L. Finally, the convective heat flux in the air phase with heat transfer coefficient H air is found by Q equals H air times the difference between the temperature of the air at the wall interface and the temperature of the air. Because these calculations are under the assumption of steady state, we can say that all three fluxes are equal to each other. By adding all the equations together, we find that Q equals the quantity of 1 over K wall plus 1 over H coolant plus 1 over H air all to the negative 1 power times the difference between the temperature of the coolant and the temperature of the air. Thus, Q prime is equal to this Q times A. The heat transfer coefficients are traditionally found using an epsilon NTU method using the Nusselt number of the fluid, the diameter of the flow, and the thermal conductivity of the fluid with the equation H equals the Nusselt number times the thermal conductivity of the fluid divided by the diameter. Therefore, the value of the heat transfer coefficient and thus the heat flux is also dependent on parameters including the fluid's velocity, viscosity, and specific heat as seen in equations for the Nusselt number, Prandtl number, and Reynolds number. These parameters are dependent on factors like the shape of the radiator and the solution used for a coolant. As you can see from the equations, the thermal conductivity constant plays a big role in much of the heat transfer effectiveness of the radiator. Most modern radiators are made out of aluminum. Aluminum is a lightweight metal which allows for less fuel consumption of the car. Pure aluminum has a thermal conductivity of 235 watts per kelvin per meter. Because of this high thermal conductivity coefficient, it is a good choice of a radiator material so it can transfer heat more efficiently from the coolant. The coolant also plays a huge role in heat transfer. The exact makeup of the coolant that is used depends on the car. The base of the coolant is always water because of its high capability to transfer heat. However, because of possible freezing temperatures in the winter, ethylene glycol is added to lower the freezing point of the coolant. Having a mixture of ethylene glycol and water also raises the boiling point of the coolant, which is important because it must remain a liquid to efficiently transfer heat. You may be asking why the coolant in this picture is green. Most coolants in the U.S. are green because they contain a mixture of phosphate and silicate. This mixture slowly forms a layer that insulates the metal it touches, which is why coolant must be replaced every few years. Finally, to sum everything up, heat exchangers are used in many mechanisms around the world. Heat exchangers are systems used to transfer heat between two fluids. A car radiator is a common and well-known example of a heat exchanger and the example we use here to explain it. The radiator in the car is used to transfer heat between the cold air and the hot coolant which is flowing through the radiator. This cold coolant is then used to cool down the engine of the car to keep it running efficiently and keep it from overheating. This process uses convective heat transfer followed by conductive heat transfer and then again with convective heat transfer. These transfers depend on many factors and constants. These include heat transfer coefficients, thermal conductivity, and the Nussel, Prandtl, and Reynolds numbers. The material of the radiator also affects the efficiency of the heat transfer. This is why car radiators are generally made of aluminum, which has a very high thermal conductivity. The coolant properties are also important, as they need to have a high boiling point and low freezing point in order to stay a liquid. A car radiator highlights many different aspects of heat transfer, which is utilized in everyday life.